Please join us every week for a new episode of Understanding the Human Condition with Dr. James Flowers. Dr. Flowers and his most admired mentors, respected colleagues, and VIP guests will share valuable insight into underlying health causes, conditions, and issues. These in-depth yet approachable episodes are a great resource for both private individuals and industry professionals. Our esteemed host, Dr. James Flowers, is one of the most recognized and respected names in the field of chronic pain, mental health, and substance use disorders, both nationally and internationally. Dr. Flowers is the founder of J. Flowers Health Institute, located in Houston, Texas. For more information about J. Flowers Health Institute and its concierge services, go to jflowershealth.com or dial 713-783-6655. And be sure to mention this podcast. Welcome to Understanding the Human Condition with our host, Dr. James Flowers. Hey, Robin. Hey, how are you? I am fantastic. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It's 2021. This is our 21st podcast Woo-hoo. with a very special guest. I am so excited. I, I, I feel like another family member is here. I know. Right? <laughs> Shelby Stanger, the famous Shelby Stanger. <laughs> yes. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks for having me. How are you? Thank you I'm for excellent. I went surfing this morning. Life is good. Their sun is coming out right now oh. in Southern California. I love it. It's awesome. You are in San Diego, correct? I'm in San Diego right now in a town called Solana Beach, which is just this great little beach town. That is so cool. Yeah. I love that. Yes. And and she just told me that you can open her door and walk directly down to the ocean. So how nice so would that cool. be? I wouldn't get any work done, though. I just yeah. I can't get any work done. Oh, you would. There's times when the waves aren't very good, so you just get it done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I thought for those who don't know you, even though everyone will know you, I'd read a, your, a brief bio about you, if that's all right. You okay with that? Yeah. Shelby Stanger is a seasoned journalist and top-ranked podcaster whose work and podcasts have been featured everywhere from the New York Times and the San Diego Union Tribune to Outside Magazine and ESPN. Curious about her subjects and willing to go great lengths in her research, Shelby has surfed from New Jersey to New Zealand, studied with a breath guru, paddled down a portion of the (laughs) Amazon River, and interviewed countless CEOs, athletes, and wellness experts on assignment for major publications. With a knack for audio stories, Shelby created and sold her first podcast about adventure called Wild Ideas Worth Living to REI Co-op in 2020. And when you're still the host, right? I still host the show. I just did a podcast interview yesterday with this guy who set the record for running the fastest time on the Pacific Crest Trail and the Appalachian Trail. And he's a (sighs) dentist from Belgium. He was so cool. No way. What was his time? Do you remember? (laughs) He did it in like 40 days. He broke the record by five days. Wow. Like against professional athletes that all they do is run. And he's just some dentist from Belgium. It was so cute. He was awesome. I can't wait to see that. I told her he was the Forrest Gump of Belgium. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, he was. He was awesome. And I wanted to mention that you recently hosted an award-winning travel show for Lufthansa called Life Changing Places. And your latest project, Vitamin Joy Podcasts, ding, 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 launched this past year with a standout crew of guests offering prescriptions for having more health, humor, and fun in everyday lives. Wow. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You guys do great work over there. You change lives, invite mm-hmm. change, employ my mother, <laughs> entertain <laughs> lots so of family much. members. It's the best. You know, it's amazing. We've done a podcast with Dr. Stanger, we have. who's her mother. We've done a podcast with Sydney Holland, who's her sister. Yes. And I'm really hoping to get the other sister on soon uh, yes. as well, Felicia. Well, now that we know she has a big announcement coming. But none of us know what it yeah, is. I think, yeah. Well, it's good. You all get to hear about it as soon as this podcast comes yeah. out. You know, I just want to throw out a question since I said we've interviewed, obviously, Dr. Stanger and Sydney Holland and now you. How do you how does your family do this? You, you guys are like powerhouse women and just amazing women of your uh, in, in the state of California and really yeah. around the country. How did you guys become so successful and happy and thriving in life? I don't know. I think we all have like a little ADHD maybe. We all have a little bit too much energy. Mm -hmm. And if it's not burned, it can be destructive. But I think our mom is just a straight up hustler. Like she's amazing. (laughs) And from a young age, she just told us, you can be whatever you want to be. Just be positive. Don't do drugs. Don't 
you know, have yep. a baby yep. um, <laughs> until you're, you know, married or yep. have a partner or yeah. something. You know, she just, she was all about letting us do whatever we wanted. And, you know, growing up as a, she was a college professor. So mm -hmm. we always had a motley crew of college students around us from very different walks of life. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, I think the best thing that my mom passed down to us is all of us can talk to anybody yeah. And Wheezy, our mother, has taught us to find goodness in everybody. So if you ever came over to Thanksgiving at our house, mm -hmm. non-pandemic, you will find a guy from the grocery store who bags our groceries mm -hmm. that she invited over to dinner, Aww. somebody random from the gym, a student. I mean, every year. That's it's like so special. Cool. Remember, She's really a special yeah. lady. Yeah. Um, but thank you. I don't know. You know, we're all a little competitive, too, but yeah. we just like completely different things. I'm interested in surfing. I'm not interested in fashion or really right. art and my mm -hmm. oldest sister is and she's so good at it and she doesn't surf neither does my middle si mm -hmm. sister but my middle sister is completely interested in something else and yeah I, we also one thing about the pandemic that's been amazing is we have this morning ritual where we do facetime every morning we, we get on the phone and talk to each other and you know, we all talk smack about each other, but we, yeah. nobody can, nobody outside our circle can make fun of us. Absolutely, but, yeah. But we do, and it's great. And I hear Felicia has been, uh, should I say, most difficult or most cautious or uh, about the COVID uh, problem and pandemic and saying, mm. you can't come over, I'm not coming over. Well, um, I mean, I don't know. She changed her tune. They went to Costa Rica the last month. And oh, oh <laughs> she called her out. <laughs> she only held out so long. She's been, she, really great her, her actually her son encouraged them to take a trip in Costa Rica yeah I think in many ways is way more safe oh, than yeah. Southern yeah. California right now yeah so, oh that's right because we were out to dinner yeah. and we took a picture and your mom didn't have her mask on and she chewed her oh, yeah. and Felicia texted her a her. phone call <laughs> said, yeah, what yeah, are you yeah. doing yeah <laughs> but you also had another good mentor uh great mentor Izzy when yes. you were growing up I was reading about that where she was your uh, diving instructor. She, she was my surf instructor. So yeah. when I was a little girl, so we've also all had, you know, some shared trauma, I think. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of maybe listeners listening to this podcast has had something really hard they've had to right. go through, whether it was addiction that they've had to overcome or whatever. When I was 11, you know, my sisters were older. They were 16 and 21. Our father, my mom's husband, passed away suddenly of a sudden heart attack. And we each took very different lessons from that. Like, I think one of my sisters took the need to be more financially responsible because when my dad died, he didn't have life insurance. He didn't have a will. He didn't have anything. He was only 47. I took the need to live life to the fullest because I was like, wow, my dad was here. He tucked me in. He said good night. And then he was gone. Yeah. And I think I kind of went on a binge of adventure from, mm -hmm. from that age on. I was always kind of adventurous. But the summer after my father passed away, my mom sent me to surf camp and it was this great surf camp through San Diego state where you'd surf in the morning and then you'd water ski, sail, kayak, um, or do one of those activities in the afternoon. Yeah. And it was subsidized by San Diego state. So she got a deal and I was a pretty hyperactive kid. So she sent me there and all these gorgeous male instructors who I loved. Mm. One day I had a female instructor. The guys loved her. She was witty. She was smart. She spoke French and Spanish fluently as well as English. And she happened to teach SAT classes. Wow. So my mom loved her. Yeah. And uh, she ended up being my babysitter, this woman named Izzy. And she just was such a good mentor. It was so cool yeah. to find a woman that was athletic, pretty, yeah, could like hang with the guys, but the guys all liked her. And who was incredibly smart and walked to the beat of her own drum. And I just really developed yeah. a really cool friendship with her. So my mom let her babysit me. She let her stay with us when um, she went out of town for work. And when my mom remarried and we moved to another house, we had a studio off the back of our house. And I think Izzy at the time was like living out of the back of her truck or at her mom's <laughs> house. She ended up renting the studio from my mom, lived above you know, our house and wrote the business plan for this all woman's surf school called Surf Diva in the back of our house. And that surf school is the original biggest surf school for women in the world today that so it's really cool awesome. having an entrepreneur in our backyard and speaking of your mom remarrying she was a professor at san diego state and then of course met the athletic director <laughs> yeah and i was stoked i was an athlete um she had been bringing home like these really nerdy jewish producers which is fine we're jewish yeah. but like 
<laughs> they weren't very interesting, and Home Alone had come out, and I was like, I'm going to set up marbles and trick these guys, and they're going to fall when they come in the house. Then she told us about this guy, John. She showed us his picture. We're like, oh, my God, he's cute. Ask him out. Yeah. He had sons, so I was really excited because I figured I could date their friends. Right. Uh Um, They were in high school. It just did not happen. I had no interest in their friends. They were football players from, like, another school. But, um... But yeah, John was great. We got lucky and won the lottery. You, d- you won the lottery with John yeah. Guadas. I, I did, yeah. completely. So I yeah. had a great dad who raised me, and I got really lucky. And yeah. he was yeah. an athlete. So as an athlete, having a stepdad was that was an athletic director and took me to soccer games, and he had a boxed seat at the s- local stadium by my house. That wow. was pretty cool. So that, yeah. that is so cool. He got lucky. What sister was it that bought you a green surfboard when you were 12 years old? Felicia. And uh, Felicia's my uh, middle sister, the one you haven't interviewed. But, you know, she and I were really tight. And, I, you know, she really helped raise me along mm-hmm. with my mom. She always watched out for me. If anybody called me a name, she would threaten to beat them up. <laughs> and she knew mm. I wanted to learn to surf so bad. But my real father grew up in New York, Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. Girls didn't really surf. He didn't understand mm-hmm. it. Yeah. He would take me boogie boarding. So when he p- passed away, my mo- my sister got me a green surfboard, which is actually still in the rack. It's like bright green. It's no one. way. Is it that uh, one? Awesome. Yeah, it's that, that is one. so cool. And uh, I kept it. And she, I could barely stand up on it, but it, I slept with it in my bed. I was so excited. And <laughs> I surfed. And I think in surfing, uh, it was such a good outlet for a young kid who lost their father because yeah. in the yeah. ocean, you could learn to answer things that you could never answer on land. I think the ocean has a way of humbling us. You're in nature. It can be social. Um, you get a great workout. I, and there's just something about water that's really healing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I wish we had more of that. Of course, we have we have the Texas Gulf Coast, but it's a little bit different than the, than the West Coast, you know. Um, what is, speaking of being the water being humbling, what what was the biggest humbling experience or scariest experience of your life surfing? Well, if you had one. Yeah, I did. Well, I think it was like a culmination of events. So in 2009, I was in a great job. I was running a woman, well, I was running women's and international sales and marketing at Vans. Mm-hmm. And I really wanted to quit, but I was scared. I had a little bit of depression. I was in this relationship that was great on paper, but I wasn't into the guy anymore except for he was perfect on paper. So I had this job on paper that was perfect, guy on paper that was perfect, but they were no longer fulfilling me. And I was kind of going into this deep depression. So Mm -hmm. I started freelancing stories on the side and I told a couple PR people, hey, I'm gonna quit my job. If you have any stories you want me to cover, let me know. And I finally got the courage to quit, to one, get help for depression, Mm -hmm. two, quit my job. And the day I quit my job, I got invited to go to Indonesia on a surf trip with all men which was amazing, Wow! in the middle of the Mentawais, which is this archipelago of islands off of Indonesia. But the waves were absolutely terrifying and huge. And so I'd already quit my job. I had to come back and give them three months notice because Vans was really nice and they Mm -hmm. liked me. Um, But yeah, the waves were terrifying. So I was really lucky on that trip. There was this wise old mentor who happens to be linked to Hawaiian royalty named Brian Keolana on the on the trip, and I did a podcast with him later on, but hmm. he's the guy who was the stuntman for pretty much every movie made in Hawaii, the, the show Lost, Blue Crush, and I was asking him how he coached Kate Bosworth, that little Disney mm-hmm. blonde in the big mm-hmm. waves for the movie Blue Crush, and he's like, I took her to Waimea Bay the first day, which is like this wave that breaks 50 feet wow. tall, and he didn't finish the story, but as he's telling me this story, this big wave comes, and he looks at me and he's like, are you going to go? And when this Hawaiian god of a man says, are you going to go? You start putting your head down and you start paddling. And this giant triangle is coming. And I'm like, oh, my God. And he had told me, Shelby, start saying three things because I got absolutely worked before. He said, start saying, make it, make it, make it. Such a simple advice wow. when you fall. And he told me to sing a happy song when I fell. And so long story short, I catch the ride of my life. And it was amazing. And I didn't get totally worked. And um that is he so later cool. told me that uh, Kate Bosworth was on a jet ski, not surfing the first day. So. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. <laughs> but, yeah, that was probably the most humbling trip. Um, yeah. Their waves were, you know, double overhead, which is two of me on top of each other. And, wow. And they break in shallow reefs, and it was really scary. But after wow. that trip, I had so much confidence. And I think that's what nature and surfing does for you is 
when you conquer something in nature, you feel so much stronger on land. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In your head. Yeah. And so I tell okay. anybody who's struggling with making a decision or who has to do something hard, get outside in nature and do something that challenges you a little bit mm-hmm. because that confidence you build will carry over into every other aspect of your life. Yeah. And you'll just feel amazing. Absolutely. You know, you're, you, in conversations, it's no uh, secret at all. You know, Sydney talks about being in recovery. Uh, yeah. You're really open about having some depression historically. How do you yeah. think as a woman you've overcome and, and you deal with that depression? And I think you're probably going to say nature and sea and all of that. But what do you what do you have to say about overcoming? I think for me, what I've realized this year is having a sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. Like if I know I have something to look forward to, I can't get depressed. Yeah. I've also just mm-hmm. let go of expectations and kind of let go of like what I call the proverbial butt. Like when I lived in Costa Rica, I used to feel like I had a big butt, <laughs> but the Costa Rica chefs would say something really vulgar to me. They'd be like, ay, mami, sus chanchotes. <laughs> you have two pigs located where your butt should be. But like, basically what they're saying is your butt is voluptuous and yummy. And I was like, they love the butt. I need to let go of the butts and the butts in our life are just stupid. So if that I is have, amazing. I love that. <laughs> if I have excuses in life, you know, those don't serve me. I just have purpose. I have a really strong meditation practice mm-hmm. where I just sit for five minutes. Gratitude, obviously game changer. Yep. Yeah. Um, and I, I really do work that I like. So mm-hmm. I was depressed for many reasons because I had a job I didn't like. Mm-hmm. And right. that was hard for me. I, I loved my job. It was good on paper, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes the things I want to do are really hard like quitting to be a podcaster and like making it as a podcaster and a journalist isn't easy. Right. Um, so purpose I would say is big. And then I eat really clean. I work out. I have love. Like love is huge. I have a really great relationship with yeah. a guy. Yeah. I am just over the moon in love with. Didn't and Izzy help you with that? Didn't Izzy somehow she, introduce you to him? She, well, I was down in Costa Rica teaching surfing and I met him in the water, which wow. is such a cool story okay and you know she said kind of go for it and I was like really he's older like Mm -hmm. she's like yeah you should go for it um it took us six months later to end up back in the same jungle together and we were just friends and I had I had already made out with his best friends I sort of (laughs) as an option so I I had really good game because I didn't think of him like if I liked a guy I had probably terrible game because I didn't think of him as an option you know we had really good chemistry and we liked each other and I wasn't super awkward. And then one day he busted the move and I yeah. was like, Whoa, wow, let's go for it. Let's go. Um, you know who then, I think of yeah. when I see him? Who, who do people tell you he looks like? I don't know. He looks like everybody says it's either a Peloton instructor or like some actor. Well, that too, <laughs> like super good looking. He looks just like John Wattis, your, oh, your stepfather. Oh, like my dad. Does he? <laughs> he does. Oh, yeah. And his they name look is like John. father and son. <laughs> they look exactly alike. And you know what? I'm totally cool with it because I picked out John for my mom. We were yes. like, go for it. And That's right. He's a great guy. And if yeah. I'm going to make him, I totally have an electric complex. I'm okay with it. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Um, so, but yeah, so he's a good guy. Yeah. You're a podcaster and a journalist and a teacher and all these different things. What's your favorite role? What's your favorite I one? love interviewing people. Like, that is just so fun. Uh, I'm new to teaching. I like it. I think I'm not, like, I, d- I haven't done it enough. Well, tell the audience what you teach. Well, I, te- I taught a podcast class that you were in, which was amazing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I taught people how to launch a podcast. And really what I taught them is how to get over, out of their own head and yeah. just to start and press play. Because right. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing we all struggle with. Um, but I love interviewing people's about their stories. For me, there had been so many times in my life where I felt stuck that interviewing other people who don't feel, who were unstuck and how they became unstuck, yeah. that is the most interesting thing to me. Um, and, and hearing their stories, I've always been able to have more courage to like unstuck myself. Yeah. Yeah. And give courage to other people to do the same. And I hear from a lot of people who've quit their jobs, broken up with husbands, gone on adventures that's awesome. they're inspired by a podcast which is really rewarding that is so asked cool. about depression the other thing is like i got help i, I saw someone who was helpful mm-hmm. i think it's, it's hard to find a therapist that yep. works for you but when you do that that's pretty awesome that is so cool mm-hmm. robin i'm going to interview you for a second what was the takeaway that you 
your biggest takeaway from Shelby's podcast class? I know what it was. It was because we never really, we did the podcast, and I mean, we really didn't know what we were doing when we started. And when we joined your class, we were probably on the ninth episode, ninth or tenth, I think. Mm -hmm. But um, we never, she said to, to imagine who your audience, who is that person that you're speaking to? What does that person look like? Mm -hmm. You know, who is that person? And I never visually thought about who we, who that person right. was who mm -hmm. was listening to us, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And it just made a really big difference, mm. you know? And, and are they going to take anything from this? And, yeah, it was really cool. That yeah. was the one that stood cool. out. Yeah. What I'm is glad it, it helped, helped yeah. you. Yeah. So what was it like to grow your podcast, uh, Ideas Worth Living, right? <clears throat> and then grow it to an audience that REI comes along and says, hey, we want to buy your podcast. Honestly, I'd never done this before, but I took a business class when I had this idea of launching a podcast. Mm -hmm. And the woman who has this accelerator class said, hey, day one, write down your business plan. And by week 12, the last day of class, you have to present it to a team of investors. So on my business plan, it said sell to REI. No way. Said, hey, this would be a great sponsor. And I honestly thought that I would pitch REI because they had this campaign at the time called Force of Nature where they're trying to integrate women into outdoor activities. And I was like, oh. I'm a woman. I'm into nature. I've already worked in action sports. They're going to love me. They're going to love this podcast. They're going to be 100% into subsidizing it. And yeah. someone introduced me to someone there. He's like, email this guy. You're in. And I thought it would be a slam dunk. And the guy was like, great. Love your idea. You seem really enthusiastic. But no, we're not doing podcasts. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Uh, uh -huh. so I, I ended up getting it sponsored by a bunch of people for six months and it was a steady growth. Like my mom shared it and I saw a big tick, yep. like someone else shared it. And every week it was growing. And it was the first thing I've ever done where I was always anti goals because they're kind of daunting and rigid. Yeah. But I wrote down exactly what I wanted to do. I loved what I was doing. And I did like crazy things for every podcast. Like I did PR for every single show. I told everybody I had flyers. I hung up flyers at coffee shops, like just things that so you wouldn't cool. normally do for yeah. a podcast. So six months later, when I hit up REI, I built this giant pitch deck, paid a guy a ton of money to help me design it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, do you want me to send you my pitch deck, guys? Like the show's growing. It's doing really well. Wanted to circle back with you. And the guy wrote me back five minutes later and said, actually, we want to talk. We want to get into podcasting. I have some ideas for you. It was like miraculous timing. Wow. He never saw my pitch deck. They licensed the, de they licensed the show. Right. And then after two years of licensing, they're like, hey, we want to buy it. And at first I was like, I don't want to sell it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, yeah. I was a little distraught. Yeah. It was my baby. It was the first thing I'd ever really grown and put my blood, sweat, and tears into. But then I kind of went back to my business plan and I was like, well, I mean, I did say I wanted to sell it. It's three years. Like That's... I, I think the other thing I learned this year is like, I have a lot of ideas and my ego wants my ideas to be, to get into the world one way, but my heart doesn't care how the ideas get out there. They right. just want the ideas to get out there. So if REI, I had no following on social media. I didn't care about social media. I thought it was silly. Um, you know, and so REI had a bigger audience than Shelby Stanger. And I figured so many more people could get unstuck by right. using adventure in the outdoors to do so. And if they could help be the catalyst that reaches more people, mm -hmm. I'm in. And they've been a really good partner. Like I'm during this whole pandemic, I was so stoked that I sold the podcast to them. And yeah. It yeah. Great. yeah. That's and this has been a bright spot for REI as well. You know, retail hasn't been the easiest thing in the world. And this podcast got recognition yeah. by, um, you know, a lot of places. So it's been cool. That is amazing. How did you come up with the idea for your newest podcast? Yeah, I, I've have, you know, I've always been interested in health and wellness, but there's so many podcasts out there that are just not very accessible. And I'm also really interested in humor. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to offer bite-sized doses of things that we could do to have more health and more joy in everyday lives and not take ourselves so seriously. Because yeah. I think when we talk about depression, like I can get really like, you know, in my own head about tasks or what perfectionism. Mm -hmm. And when I have laughter and I take myself less seriously, I have so much more joy in my life. And we are at a time in, especially the United States where, you know, everybody is like really uptight yeah. about joking. But I think we need it. If you look at every culture, like, you know, you look at Jewish people, mm -hmm. they had horrific experiences and yet they're some of the funniest people ever. And yep. I think, 
you know, we need laughter during hard times. So yeah, that's how I came up with the idea. And I also had this little autoimmune thing called vitiligo where my skin was turning white and only on my face. I was like, really? My face? Um, uh. But what I learned was that I did all sorts of diets. I fasted. I did veganism. I, I've tried it all. But honestly, the times where I've just been happy and like let go, that's the times when my skin has pigmented and yeah. not had vitiligo. So wow. I just wanted to offer things that were cheap, easy, affordable to people. So we've interviewed comedians, um, health experts, sleep experts, anxiety experts. Wow. All of awesome. that. And I wanted it to be as easy as taking a vitamin. So yeah. Yeah. doses for more joy. That's amazing. What's your favorite one so far? Do you have like a top three or your favorite yeah. episodes? I interviewed this girl who wrote a book called How to Get Out of Your Own Head. And yep. she's just funny. And she offers really good prescriptions on like how to have less anxiety. And one is like name your inner critic. You know, I call mine Debbie, like Debbie Downer. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. She has a different name for hers. And then I loved interviewing <coughs> Gabby Reese. Gabby oh, is yeah. a yeah. volleyball player to married to Laird Hamilton. I just like badass women. Yeah. And, you know, she's a total badass. She is. And she offered a lot of advice on just being less rigid. And she was cool. Yeah. I liked mm -hmm. her. Yeah. She's now, I'll throw cool. a question out there. How, sure. for, for our podcast, how do you get a hold of a Gabby Reese? <laughs> <laughs> I met her at a, an event. And of course I, you did. <laughs> myself, and I said, hey, I'd love to interview you. And, yeah. you know, whenever I interview someone, I like, I do what you guys do. Like, yeah. I'm very mm -hmm. grateful. I send them the gift. Yep. Um, yeah. I don't know. That is you so know, cool. Having REI behind me was helpful in getting guests yes. through REI. So, yeah. like, I was able to get Cheryl Strayed. Yeah. I tried on my own. It didn't work. But with REI, it worked. So That's so there cool. You go. Yeah. That's cool. But yeah. Does John share your passion for healthy eating, by the way? Oh, Johnny's more healthy than me. No he's way. Vegan, vegan. He looks like he's my age or younger, and he's actually 55. Yeah. Wow. And he looks real good. So, um, yeah, he's always been interested in healthy eating. His dad had a heart thing when he was younger, and he had changed his diet. Johnny has been vegan for like 20 years. When I met him, he I mean, every now and then we'd, mm -hmm. we'd go to sushi back then, but now he doesn't even eat fish, which is kind of annoying. So, yeah. um, Cause I, I'm actually not a vegan anymore. I eat, I just eat food, yeah. but I try to eat whole food, mm -hmm. mostly yeah. plants, not too much. And I just have a good relationship. I don't want to have issues with food. So I just there eat healthy. Go. And um, if I want a cookie, I eat a cookie, but yeah, Johnny's pretty healthy. He mm. loves it and he, he works a lot on his body. Like he does a lot of movement exercises mm -hmm. and trains with like all these cool gurus. And he That's turned so me cool. on to a lot of the health stuff. So honestly, if I could get him to host his show, it would be the health show, but he's not going to do it because he'd trade stock. So I do the, the yeah, show. Yeah, there you go. A lot of ideas. Yeah. yeah. What's your success in your relationship making it so successful? I think we have fun and we yeah. play. And I tell all, Robin and I were talking about it yesterday, but like all you have to do if you're a girl is just be really nice. Uh -huh. It's true. All you have to do yeah. is be nice, yeah. have fun, and you got to bring the energy that you want them to bring. Like sometimes I'm like, I wish, sometimes I'm like, I wish Johnny had like this big job and did this. And but you know what? If I'm doing a lot of cool stuff, like he'll have FOMO and then he'll start doing cool yeah. stuff. So yeah. right. I think you just have, you know, Gabby Reese says that. She's like, bring the energy you want into the relationship. If you want flowers, go like get him a plant or flowers That's or exactly whatever. It. You know? Yeah. If you, I have so many girlfriends that are like, they're not broken, but like they can't figure it out. And I'm not better looking than any of them. They are like tens mm -hmm. on a scale and they can't get guys. And I just, I don't understand. I want to shake them. I want to be like, I've never had troubles because I'm nice. And I also play. And I also, if you, if you're a surfer, like, yeah. And you're a girl, your odds are You've just, already made it. <laughs> you're stoked. You've got a whole lineup of men and you're usually the only girl in the water. Yeah. So. Well, yeah, that's smart. And the guns on those arms don't hurt. Right? Oh, thanks. I've got a My girl God. crush on your arms. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> These are just genetic. I don't know. Yeah. But that goes to the chanchotes, the booty. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say thank you for all that you do for the veterans, too, because my son's a veteran, but I, I was reading that you do that camp every, you take a week off. Yeah. And you do in September and you teach yep. the veterans. We didn't get to do it this year, but every year we get to take a week off. It's actually Surf Diva does it and they teach veterans who are wounded how to surf. And it's yeah. like. And PTSD. Yeah. And I've taught a blind guy how to surf. What? Which is, yeah, it's tricky. So maybe have, there is hope for me. Yeah. <laughs> you have a runway of people who line up 
kind of the area and like you know oh, yeah. the guy was really good he was people just got out of his uh, way he could read the waves and feel them better than i could like wow. just such a good surfer um they taught i didn't i wasn't in this group but there was a guy with no legs and no arms who stood up on a surfboard and it, like you wow. cry but these guys give us so much the least we could do is right. give to them i think that's think something awesome. i'm learning this year is like there's a lot of ways to feel good mm-hmm. giving is like Mm-hmm. another level yeah. you will get out of your head you'll conquer your depression but altruism is a really powerful tool yeah mm-hmm. absolutely mm-hmm. Yeah. so of all these places that you've traveled to what's on your bucket list that you want to go that you haven't gone yet oh we were supposed to go to italy and norway last year and Colombia, but um mm. i'd like to go to europe i spent a lot of time in south america when i worked for vans my territory was my boss was venezuelan so we spent yeah. a lot of time there um, cool. But I would like to go to Europe, like especially in Norway um, and Italy. I don't know why, but we have a neighbor who lives in Italy, and it just seems so cool. It we'll does. probably go back to Costa Rica this year as soon as we can. Yeah. As soon as, as, as are, it's are, just are, easy and nice. Are you planning on getting the vaccine? Yeah. I mean, I'm not anti the vaccine. You know, I have a lot of friends in the health space, and they're like, this is totally new technology. It's cool. Get it. Let's, mm-hmm. let's all collectively help humanity. I am one of those people who, you know, it's tricky in Southern California. Like, our neighbors are having parties on New Year's Eve. And I was like, we're the epicenter of the virus. Why are you doing this? Um, It can be challenging. But um, I have hope. I think, you know, we're all learning a lot this year. (laughs) Absolutely. For sure. sure. I had my vaccine, my first dose of the vaccine last week. and I'm jealous. I was so excited to get it and and i just i'm sharing it with as many people as i can just to try to promote it and say hey i'm well i don't i didn't have any side effects i had a sore arm for a couple of days but it's all right go get it please go get it let's all so we can resume our lives yeah for sure i mean i wish we could get it easier right now like Uh, in tel aviv they just had the military give it out at a soccer field i'm like oh my god that would be awesome but i found it i actually asked a doctor friend why we're not doing that and he said it um they thought about that, but Americans don't generally respond well to military organizing an event like that. Ah, uh, makes like, sense. Like, they get weird with the military. And I'm like, oh, I can see that. Okay. But yeah. it would have been nice to yeah. just be done. Get it out there. Yeah. Well, we're uh, running out of time. Oh we're no. kind of down to our, we've, I don't even have a two minute warning. It's a zero done. minute warning. <laughs> <laughs> but, because we, we lost track of time here. But if someone wanted to contact you and take and do your podcasts, um, the course, course, thank you. Who, how would they reach you? I'm easy to find. It's shelbystanger.com. You can listen to Vitamin Joy anywhere podcasts are available or Wild Ideas Worth Living anywhere that's available. And I'm also on Instagram at Shelby Stanger, but shelbystanger.com. You can find everything you want to know and more. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for having me and for the work you Thank do. Thank you. I so it. Thank you. I'm so excited to see you and, and love your family. Love you. And I hope to get out to California and see you guys soon. Awesome. We'll, we'll have to go surfing. Yeah, absolutely. Take good care. Thanks again. Yeah. Adios. Right. Bye. Bye. Happy Adios. New Year.